Uh, my name is Samar Vishay, super uh, excited to be here today to talk about uh, decentralized uh, wireless networks. Um, so telecom should not be about connecting places, but more about connecting lives. And I've had about almost 25 years experience building with networks globally in Canada, in Africa, in Europe. And um, one thing that, uh, that there's a misconception about is the, the unconnected, the 3 billion people that are not connected with the whole digital divide problem, uh, that they reside in third world countries. That, that is not true. We actually have a digital divide in North America. There's a lot of rural remote areas that are not covered. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to showcase a community that's literally an hour away from Toronto that is not connected. And on top of that, it's an indigenous community. So what exactly is Carrier One? So I'm the CEO and co-founder of Carrier One. And what we're, we've embarked on this journey about uh, almost a year, a year ago now, where uh, we're helping build a network that is not centralized, that is not dependent on a mobile operator, that um, which obviously exists all over the world, but it's more of an oligopoly right now when you think about it. Uh, so if you imagine solar cell technology, how you can install a solar cell on top of your roof and then sell electricity back to the grid and monetize on that. Um, that's exactly what Carrier One is building, uh, but in the telecom space, where you can actually deploy a node, a radio node, on top of your, uh, on the you know, side of your home, or uh, a high rise and actually monetize by emitting a cell phone signal so that others can leverage their um, you know, smartphones, Apple, Samsung, whatever it might be, and, and connect to the internet. And in return, you become part of that shared and circular economy monetizing on, the, uh, on, on some of these uh, data transmissions that happen. So um, traditionally, uh, what mobile operators would, you know, let's let's assume that you're trying to get um, service at, a, a, at your farm, for example, or uh, at your cottage. You would have to call your mobile operator, give them your latitude, longitude, and they basically run up a map and say, okay, this will be deployed within about two to three years. And you basically have no option but to wait. Well, this actually changes that concept completely because we're going to showcase how you can deploy this overnight. Um, and then the last pillar that we're targeting is the whole, um, I'm not sure if, if you've uh, heard of the term ENS, uh, but it's basically mapping a domain name to a wallet, which is uh, like a crypto wallet. Uh, what we're introducing is the PNS, which is a phone number system that will map telephone numbers, which all of us have some kind of cell phone or landline, and that will map to your wallet, and it could serve as, as a digital identity method uh, globally. So I'm going to uh, play a little video here for that community that I mentioned. Introducing the latest form of technology, where users will be able to take control and monetize their mobile usage without the reliance of a centralized provider. Canada's only global decentralized wireless telecommunications network. One third of the global population has been left without connectivity. The solution is here with Carrier One. Our first imprint starts with our beloved First Nations community in Canada who have been left neglected in regards to their connectivity. Our team was able to successfully complete radio installation on the Six Nations Reserve, providing connectivity for the whole community. Our network will allow them to interact with their friends and family without difficulty, a basic human right that every person deserves to have. The future of telecom is here. Carrier One. Okay, so that we actually, I'm going to show you another video where we visited the community a few months after we deployed this. So this was the actual deployment and to show how it changed their lives by providing connectivity. And it's not like there was a lack of operators to provide access to this community. Like I said, this is only about an hour away from Toronto with three mobile operators available to provide access, but it just didn't make economic or financial sense for the incumbents to, to provide this access. 
So uh, I mentioned that one third of the world's population is, is off the grid right now. And the only way to actually tackle some of the uh, you know, reduced inequalities and, and the whole uh, gender equality, education, justice, e-justice, e-learning, uh, e I mean, all that stuff really is solved by, uh, by connecting these communities and bringing them online to the 21st century. So we have different pillars here. Um, the underserved users, which I mentioned already, uh, you know, these are, could be indigenous communities, could be uh, cottage country, whatever it might be, farmland, uh, some sensors that you want to deploy. This is basically geared for that. And I'm gonna show you the radio and how we connect the whole thing in a minute. Uh, enterprise users are like oil, gas, mining, the warehouses, private LTE networks, same problem. They want to be able to monitor and track their assets. Uh, well, now they have a solution that they can turn up a network in a couple of hours versus a couple of months or years. Uh, Non-dominant telcos. So the reason I talk about the uh, this these two pillars specifically is Carrier One is not in the business to become a mobile operator. We are in the business to provide an orchestration platform that will enable operators to leverage their assets. And what I mean by assets are uh, spectrum. Spectrum is a very scarce asset and it's a very expensive asset because you have to bid hundreds of millions of dollars to gain uh, licensing and regulatory uh, agreements from the, from the uh, government to be able to deploy these networks. But the challenge with that is in the case of non-dominant telcos, so for example, if you go to the US, uh, you probably heard of Dish Network. So they're one of the up and coming networks in the US. They have tons of spectrum, but they just don't have enough uh, capex to spend to build the network fast enough to provide a uh, level playing field with somebody that's been around for a few decades, like an AT&T. So allowing them access to uh, uh, giving people the, the ability to, to build this network on their behalf, now it becomes like a, the multiplier effect that they can leverage and provide access instantly across the country uh, without spending a lot of capex. The established telco pillar is uh, you might think, like, why would an AT&T ever want to use a carrier one? Well, believe it or not, if you go to a place like Los Angeles and uh, the airport, horrible coverage, underground parking uh, in downtown LA, no no access whatsoever. So God forbid something happens and you try to dial a 911 call, you're not going to get through. Now you're able to enable, you're, you're enabling a landlord to be able to buy a radio node, deploy it in this building, provide access to uh, the user and uh, customer satisfaction goes up. AT&T just leveraged their spectrum that they already had and they can monetize on it. And the way the spectrum, the carrier one model works is for every dollar that comes into the network, 50% goes to the gateway owner, 30% goes to the uh, orchestration platform that carrier one developed, which does all the uh, interconnects, all the 911 emergency services, uh, settlement billing, all that, and then 20% actually goes to the spectrum asset that the mobile operator uh, donated, let's say, uh, to, to be able to provide access on licensed spectrum. So these are some of the deployments uh, that we've done. So it could be a rooftop, could be a tower. Um, the third slide, the third image there is, is interesting because we actually showcase by connecting it to a Starlink dish. So this is a parking lot in, in downtown Toronto connected to uh, to a battery, and we were able to provide service. Okay, so it's downtown Toronto, but it's still it's a parking lot, and it's uh, you can take a Starlink dish anywhere really. It doesn't matter, and you'll be able to provide cellular access instantly in that community. And a lot of people might ask, well, what's the range of these things? It really depends on the frequency that we use. So the lower frequency, the further it propagates, um, and it could go up to 10, 20 kilometers without, without any problems. Um, so the way we built the network is obviously, it, it's really uh, agnostic to any type of internet. It could be a Starlink, it could be fiber, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a carrier grade network, so we enable voice and data. A lot of the networks out there are only data, uh, which is, is a hindrance in a way, so it's both voice and data. It's SIM or eSIM compatible, so it's future-proofed. And uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's really uh, agnostic to any type of uh, uh, internet connection. So this would be, uh, so let's say you're a user and you ordered a radio uh, that I showcased earlier. Uh, as soon as you unpackage it and install it, uh, you plug it into the internet, it will 
will go to our servers, download the config files, pop up on this dashboard that you have access to based on your GPS coordinates, and it'll give you, uh, you know, basic statistics on your internet connection, the quality. But on the last the image there, you'll see the operator. So this was from a live dashboard um, that uh, a user had installed, and it shows you the type of operators that already started accessing that network. Um, that already have coverage, but just not in that area. So their users actually benefited immediately. Uh, and that's how we partner with mobile operators. So we visited the same site, so First Nations Cable, uh, a few months after the install. And just to kind of hear the, uh, what, what Jeff had to say, he's, he's the owner and founder of, uh, of First Nations Cable. Hopefully the volume is not too high. Hi, my name is Jeff Thomas, I'm with First Nations Cable, and uh, we've been working closely with Carrier One to provide a, a South service to go along with our current services. Very exciting times. We're looking forward to the new services that have been fired up just recently. We want to be able to supply our reserve entirely with a decent South service at a decent rate. So Jeff, super excited to be here today and see our first site install. I mean, this is really a game changer for, for our industry, the telecom industry, and uh, you've been at it for so long. I mean, man, how do you feel about this? Oh man, this is exciting times, exciting times. Between us bringing in the broadband, yeah, making that all available, our project with the fiber, fiber to the home, and then now to be able to add the cell phone to our list of services that we can provide. This is a great practical way of actually getting people engaged and build a network that actually feeds back to the grid. No different than solar panels, but nobody ever wanted to do it for telecom because it's controlled by the oligarchs, right? So exactly. I mean, this is uh, super exciting and uh, yeah, I mean, why don't we go f just go for a little okay. walk in. All right. Got a little fine tuning, and I think we're good. We're off to the races. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like ground zero right here. Super excited. Jeff, thanks for having us today. Oh, and uh, sure. yeah, thank you. So that brings us to an end. And uh, this is my QR code for LinkedIn. Uh, we'd love to connect with you if you know of any communities that need uh, connectivity. And it's not limited to Canada, by the way. So we're doing POCs in Africa. Uh, we have a partnership with, uh, uh, with a, a spectrum, uh, a satellite operator that has spectrum uh, in a few countries globally. Uh, and obviously in the U.S. since really we can deploy on an unlicensed spectrum as well. Uh, it's a bit of an anomaly to the U.S. where they have the citizens broadband radio system. Uh, it is limited to the U.S. but we're not limited to the U.S. We do have partnerships already with, with other operators globally. So thank you very much.